everybody, welcome back to yet another exciting episode of What's New in Reason 7, and this one is pretty freaking awesome. So Reason 6 brought about the capability to record audio. Reason 5 brought you the ability to sample audio into the samplers and drum machines. Reason 7 gives you the ability to quantize audio and to actually turn any audio file uh, immediately into a sliced Rex file. I'm kind of thinking on this one that... um, I don't know what the shelf life of Recycle is at this point because you don't have all the functions that you get in Recycle. And by the way, if you don't know what Recycle is, shame on you if you're watching a video about quantizing audio in Reason 7. Recycle changed the music industry back in the day. Um, but Recycle is made by Propeller Heads, so it is theirs to do uh, what they want with to it, if that makes any kind of sense in English. Um, So what they've done is they've given the capabilities of Recycle into every file that you record as audio and reason. I love this. I think this is a uh, a smash hit for these guys. Uh, So let's kind of see how this works. What I've done, I've created a Kong with just default kit. And I hit Command-T to create this here audio track. I called it Drums to Quantize. And I'm going to mute Kong so that I don't get playthrough from Kong and the audio that's going through. I'm definitely record enabling the audio track. And just to see if we're getting level, we see that Kong is playing through. Now, there's one vital step in getting any device to be targeted as a source to record, and it is, strangely enough, called Record Source. It lives in the Mix Channel Device window on top of every device. So you click Record Source first, then you will see it come up down here. So mono or stereo, of course, Kong, stereo. So I choose Stereo Input. And then I choose Kong, and that's going to tell me that I'm going to record from Kong. Now, it's that easy. Any device that makes sound in Reason has that record source button. And if you go ahead and turn it on, then you can actually create an audio track and make audio. I'm going to say in Reason 6, 6.5, that was pretty cool because we love to make audio because maybe you actually like to mix in a different program. So you make audio in Reason from one of the synths, the drum machines, the samplers, and then you export the audio. So definitely a valid function. But now that they have basically built Recycle or Rex making directly into Reason, this is a game changer because any file can be turned into a Rex file. And one of the beauties of Rex was slicing at the transient gives a program the ability to separate tempo and pitch. And it is a big deal. So we can treat audio almost the way we treat MIDI tempo changes and quantizing. It is a huge deal. So is it unique in reason? Well, the Rex part is, but quantizing audio, changing tempo of audio, you know, it's elastic audio and Pro Tools, Flex Time and Logic, uh, Warping and Ableton. Of course, most programs have this, but I'm going to say that, uh, you know, the, the company that really started this was Propellerhead. So, uh, you know, good for you guys. Uh, once again, you have uh, done things that have changed the way that we think about making music. Uh, so I love this. I just think this is an amazing feature. So I'm going to record um, four bars of drums to an audio track. We're, we're already muted on Kong, so I don't get to phasing. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to quantize. So I'm going to play a little bit off the beat. To set this up, I'm going to hit C. Turn the click on, and command P is pre-roll. Make sure I hit zero twice, get me back to the beginning. Uh, And at this point, we're going to have a click. We're going to have one bar of pre-count, as they call it in reason. And then we are going to be off to the races recording. So let's make it happen. All right, there we go. So four bars of simple drums, but I think this will really demonstrate this. I'm going to double click on the clip and I'm going to get this. And lo and behold, (laughs) there's where the magic begins. Those are the slice markers that we would basically see in Recycle. And by the way, every program that does this uses the vernacular, the terminology that uh, Propeller Heads came up with. So kudos to you guys once again. But what we're looking at would be a slice marker on every transient. And every transient with the drums would actually be a hit. And if I wanted to hear it, speaker icon, single click. 
can listen to every slice. Now, if we don't have a slice on a transient because maybe I hit it real softly, which would have been my bad, we can go ahead with the pencil tool and draw one in, or we can delete false markers. And if you've worked in any other programs, I think the terminology is, is pretty common there. You know, it's warping, it's slicing, it's all these kind of common words. Basically, we're putting a single sound in a slice so that to speed things up, we move the slices closer together. To slow them down, we move them further apart. That's Recycle 101 right there. But now we have this ability to quantize the audio. So let's play it back through. I'm going to turn pre-count off, um, but I'm going to leave the click on and let's just hear how this falls in with the click. It's close, but it's not on. So I'm gonna hit Command A. Now you can see that the highlighted slice handle here means that it's selected. They're all selected. Command K, quantize. I can uh, hit quantize uh, up here from apply. That's tool window F8 with uh, this tool on, the sequencer tool in the quantize section. I can also right click on the file and at the bottom is quantize. I'm gonna go with Command K. Now you saw everything move kind of subtly. It's because I was close, but I wasn't exactly right on it. Now it's looking at the value in the quantize window. So eighth notes, let's see what we get. It's right on it, right? Now let's just say that I wasn't happy with uh, one of the positions because you know how quantize works. It's going to move it, move that event to the nearest grid value, an eighth note in this sense. But let's say that I wanted to actually get, uh, have a little manual work on it that I, I kind of wanted to move it off time or that I didn't like where it actually quantized. And G and H here is my zoom in. Now I can click on an individual uh, slice and you can see what I can do with it. I can actually move it. I'll zoom in a little bit more. Um, manually and I can move it on that grid. So let's say that I go with a 30 second note here and I'll actually be able to move this around. It's actually too close to these other markers to be able to do that. Um, but I can manually move it. So maybe we'll move this one just to kind of show how this is going to work. So you see that by the grid amount, it's going to let me do this. And actually, let me make this fine tune actually right here on my snap mode. So we see that it's actually moving a little bit better right there, uh, a little bit more finely right there. And if I go with the 30 30-second note, we'll see that it's going to let me do 30-second note values like that. So it's going to follow your snap right there. Um, I love this ability. I think it's a super ability and reason to be able to hit a master quantize, but also to be able to get this. So what it's really doing, it's giving you the abilities of every program. I mean, this is what they all do, except it's all in one uh, within reason right on the audio track. By default, you do nothing. You record and it auto slices everything. I mean, it's, you know, it's just like these guys to come up with this kind of cool, transparent, kind of seamless technology. Um, now, there's a couple other ways that we can move things manually as well. Uh, and I love this. So let's say we keep this one selected right here. And let's say we want to hear, you know, what is that? Okay, so that's that kick. Um, go back to uh, hit Q, which is my cursor. Now with it selected, I can hold command and I'm on a Mac and I can move it with the left and right arrows, right? So that is nudging by my value. Right, so that's a 30 second note with it. I love that. I can also select a whole range. So it shows you the range down here, it shows you all highlighted, and I can move all of them, command, left, right arrow, by the snap or the, the nudge amount that's in the snap right there. Um, come back up to an eighth note. And actually, one of the, the quirks that we just saw right there is every time you leave this window after you've, after you've uh, selected something, as I move that back, you have to go back and make sure that you're kind of reselecting everything. Otherwise, it moves the whole clip. So there's my eighth note moves. You can see that's not nearly as a fine of a move uh, as when we had uh, the 30 second notes on there. So we recorded. We use Kong as a source, but this could be guitar, this could be vocals, this can be anything in the world that you're recording. Now, let's also be honest, the easiest thing to slice is drums because of the, uh, uh, the transients are so defined with this. If you're recording, let's say, 
pan flute solos, uh, and it's a very slow attack, it's going to be a little trickier to find those distinctive transients. That's where the pencil tool with maybe manually drawing some slices in. But like I said, this is every program is, is doing a part of this. So I don't think this is unfamiliar territory to most people in uh, 2013 or whenever you watch this video. Insert your own date. Um, all right, so we can move individuals, we can move entire selections, we can nudge them with command left, right arrow, and that's a Mac command with that one. But we also have a couple other things that we can do with this. Uh, and I love this, and this is to the Rex point. Now, I can go and um, right click and go down and say, I'm going to bounce, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bounce to a Rex loop. So I just made a Rex file like that out of the drums I played in Kong. Now to instantiate a version of a Rex player, I'm going to double click on this and there's my new Rex player and I'm going to open up the, the programmer and there is the, the part that I just played. And if I run it, That's exactly what I played, except it is now a Rex file, and I can copy this to track. So Rex is selected. It's going to copy it between the left and right locators. That's the way that copy loop or pattern or anything works. Uh, and if I come back down and I zoom out just a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and put my right locator straight up at bar five. To move uh, a left or right locator without actually touching them, you click option in the timeline for left and command in the timeline for right, so you don't have to really go searching for them. So now I've indicated the duration on the timeline that I want to copy. I can Come back up here, and now that is my Rex file to track in the sequencer. Rex files are great for so many reasons. Uh, we covered Rex, Dr. Rex, Dr. Octo Rex, Rex and all of its version and all of its family members uh, in, in the main class. So go back and, and review that if you need to. But you know what we get out of this is the ability to now manipulate individual slices, I can delete, I can remix, I can reorder them, I could do all sorts of really cool tricks. Now I'm going to delete this real quickly. And I'm going to go back up and say, well, okay, let's follow that out. What can we really do up in the Rex player? So I'm going to hit slice edit mode. And uh, I'm thinking maybe some reverses. Slice edit mode turns on individual slice parameters. Once again, go back to the Rex uh, video if you need to. And I'm going to maybe reverse a couple of these. And I'm going to use one of my favorite techniques, which is alt, which means that there's four different alt patterns. Uh, and you just kind of draw them up vertically to get one, two, three, and four. Uh, and what it does is it randomizes, right? So if I kind of do this trick and then uh, play it from up here. Right, so it's randomizing those four hits right there, alting them. Uh, and I also have a reverse in there as well. If I wanna maybe change around some of the decay, uh, how long the note is going to last. That's cool. If I want to maybe change my filter setting a little bit, uh, I could even go in and tweak with my panning real quickly. I love slice edit mode. It basically lets me um, be an artist and draw in these different techniques per slice, mind you. Uh, anything in the Rex player in this section is a global control. These are individual slices. I run it now. So it's definitely tweaked it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit copy loop to track. We're gonna double click it and we can actually see the randomization that's happening with all is moving things around. But once we put this to track, we can go ahead and we can requantize it if we wanted to, we could delete, we can add, we could literally remix it visually. So all these things came from me playing Kong into an audio track, quantizing the drums to begin with, showing all the different ways, you know, from command K to the tool window, to right clicking, to quantize, setting the quantize value. Then we got into being able to nudge the individual slices by selecting them, hitting command left and right arrows. So we could really tweak the audio a step further was right clicking on bounce to new Rex clip. It shows up in the tool window under audio right here, self-contained. I double clicked on this. It auto created a Rex player and it loaded that file. From there, we really went after it 
hit slice edit mode, tweaked it, and finally hit copy loop to track. And at this point, we have all the individual slices down in the main sequencer, and we can even go further from there. So that's fairly elaborate, and yet it's not that hard. Right? That's a pretty easy technical um ability to acquire with a little bit of practice, but what it opens up creativity-wise is a really big deal. I just think the the creative aspects of this in production uh, are fun for one thing, but uh, you know it just opens up so many doors creatively with this that I am a huge fan of what seems like a simple little thing that they've done uh, in Reason 7 because it already recorded audio in version 6. So I, I've heard some people, eh, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Oh, it's a big deal to be able to do everything I just did and, and literally take, you know, a couple minutes to do it. And of course, if you're really focusing on what you're doing, you'd be able to come up with some great stuff. So take this to heart, make some audio. If you don't have, uh, you know, somebody that can uh, play guitar or drums or whatever, just to practice with this, just hit uh, the record source on a synth, a sampler, drum machine, make a new audio track, command T, route it and uh, play it, get that audio captured in there and then go to town with it and really really own this ability because when you get to your real production and you're tracking a band or tracking a vocalist and you can do this, wow, uh, the creative possibilities are on, almost endless with this. So good job, Propeller Heads. Uh, love this technology. And I will see you guys in the next episode.